Hi students, in the last class I gave a brief introduction to the hydraulic and pneumatic systems. So you also studied the different applications of hydraulic pneumatic systems. At the end we came across a very important law called as Pascal's law. The Pascal's law is the governing law for hydraulic and pneumatic systems. So in this class we are going to study in detail the application of Pascal's law in fluid power engineering. So Pascal's law is considered as one of the oldest law available to the mankind regarding fluid mechanics. So before going to the topic uh, Pascal's law, why we need to study Pascal's law? The Pascal's law is very important because we are going to transmit the fluid uh, power, fluid power from static as well as dynamic states. So Pascal's law is the basic law related to these two states. So if you see this uh, diagram, you will see three different types of configuration, right? So the first one is the normal flow. So the normal flow, right? So the uniform cross section is there. So pressure will be normal. So we know that pressure is equal to force by area. So here normal distribution of pressure occurs, right? In the second case, you can see that it is a simulation of nozzle. So in the nozzle, what will happen? There is gradual reduction in the pressure and uh, gradual, gradually the cross-sectional area decreases, pressure also decreases, but the velocity increases. So that is happening in this scenario, that is in the case of nozzle. So the flow characteristic is different. In the third case, it is the reverse. It is a diffuser. In diffuser, what is happening? The pressure is increasing, the velocity is decreasing, the area is increasing. So the flow is pattern is different in different states. So if you come across all these three in a simple venturi meter. So in a venturi meter, you can see that the flow occurs inside a closed pipe. So you can have the contraction, the normal and the expansion. So all these three are available in a venturi meter. So venturi meter is a flow measuring devices. So we need to consider these three basic applications, right? So what happens in a normal flow, what happens in a nozzle, what happens in a diffuser. So all these three laws are related to Pascal's law. Of course, the pressure distribution varies in each cases, right? I have explained. So this is called as hydrostatic paradox. The knowledge of fundamental laws and equations which govern the flow of fluid is very essential for design of hydrocontrols, hydraulic control component of the system. See, we have a very good uh, source of hydraulics as well as pneumatics. But if you are not able to control properly, we will be not able to transmit the power properly. So this is very important. So we need to study basic laws governing the transmission of uh, the power. Further, in any fluid problems, we can see that it is divided, broadly divided into hydrostatic and hydrodynamic. So static is still dynamic is movement. So we need to study both hydrostatics as well as hydrodynamic. When the fluid is at still, what is the law governing? When fluid is flowing, what is the law governing? So when the fluid is at still, the best law is Pascal's law. When the fluid is flowing, you have so many laws. So you have hydrostatic law, you have Bernoulli's equations. So all these three laws are the governing laws of any hydrofluids. So first is the still fluid. So the fluid which is stored in the reservoir. So you see if you can remember in the last class I had given you the generalized components of 
uh, hydraulic and pneumatic system wherein you are going to store the fluid inside a reservoir in case of hydraulics and you are going to store the fluid in a receiver in case of a pneumatic system. So, what happens in a reservoir? Potential energy is stored. So, the mechanics of still fluid. So, the pressure acting inside the container is very important and the container is filled with the fluid. So, it is exerting the pressure on the walls of the cylinder. So, this is dependent on so many factors, right. So, the first important factor is the height of the fluid. So, how much height it is going to cover, which we call it as head. So, the height or the rise and in short we can say that the rise and the fall of the fluid we call it as head. So, head is nothing but expressing pressure in terms of liquid columns that is rise or fall. Now, what is this Pascal's law state? The Pascal law states that the intensity of the pressure at a point inside a fluid remains same, right. So, what I mean to say is P1 is equal to P2 is equal to P3 is equal to a constant. So, what is P1, P2, P3? They are the intensity of the pressure at different points. So, because of this Pascal law, it says that uniform distribution of pressure takes place and the pressure intensity remains the same throughout the cylinder. So, this is the first law. It was invented by a famous Greek scientist called as Pascals. He was the person, uh, the pressure units was remembered. Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per meter square. So, mathematically the Pascal's law is expressed as pressure is equal to rho g h, right, where rho is the mass density in kg per meter cube, g is acceleration due to gravity meter per second square, h is as I told you that pressure head. So, pressure head in terms of meter, right. So, this is very important. So, this formula is used to convert the pressure in terms of Newton per meter square into in terms of meter. So, this is very important. So, as usual we know that 1 bar. So, 1 bar is equal to 10 to the power of plus 5 Newton per meter square and 1 Pascal is equal to 1 bar is equal to 10 to the power of 5 Newton per meter square. So, looking at this we uh, have a conclusion that we can convert the absolute pressure into the relative pressure. Right. So, pressure is analogous to voltage in an electrical system. So, pressure is uh, like voltage. So, it requires two values, right. So, high pressure and low pressure. So, moving on, this Pascal law was stated in the year 1650 century by the famous scientist Pascal. He said that pressure in a fluid at rest is transmitted equally in all directions. So, he caught hold of a ball filled with fluid and he squeezed, he squeezed as a reaction he got pressure. So, he, the pressure was exerted as we know that for every action and reaction, they, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, the pressure applied by on the ball was from his side and the reaction of the ball was the back pressure, right. So, what we call it as the external pressure and the internal pressure. So, external pressure is equal to internal pressure as long as it was happening. So, this is the uh, Pascal's law demonstration. Now, how pressure is acting? So, pressure is acting at a right angles to the surface. At any surface, the pressure will be acting at the right angle to the surface. Mathematically, pressure is equal to force by area. Pressure is equal to force by area. Now, the pressure is acting on the fluid 
and uh, it is exerted and it is acting normal to the flow area. This is regarding the direction. You can see from the sketch here, this is a cylinder filled with a pressurized fluid and a piston is reciprocating and the force is applied. You can apply the force from the top. So, you are compressing the fluid. Once you compress the fluid, the pressure inside the fluid increases. So, the pressure inside the fluid increases. Now, what is happening? The pressure is exerted on the walls of the cylinder. Now, what is the application of Pascal's law regarding to fluid power system? Now, we have two important applications. One is constant power transmission and another one is power multiplication. So, the power is need to be transmitted from the source to the receiver at a constant rate. The second one is we need to transmit the power, multiply the magnitude of that power from the source end so that the receiver end he will get a huge magnitude of power. So, both are possible. You can keep the force constant or you can vary the force. Now, the first case that is constant power transmission. Now, in constant power transmission to demonstrate the capabilities, I have taken two identical cylinders. So, two identical cylinders fitted with two identical pistons, somewhat homogeneous. So, the, attrib the attributes of any cylinders are the length of the cylinder and the diameter of the cylinder. The length of the length and the diameter of both the cylinders are same in this case. And one interesting thing about this cylinder is they are connected by a pipe, a common pipe at the bottom. Two identical cylinders, one on the left side which is called as the input cylinder and one on the right side which is called as the output cylinder. Right? We designate that as two cylinders A and B. So, they are fitted with two pistons, piston A on the input side and piston B on the output side. Right? And now, what I do is, I fill this uh, cylinder with fluid. So, I will fill the cylinder with fluid. So, both cylinders are filled with the fluid. Now, what I will do is, on the input side, I will gradually apply load on the piston. So, the piston starts moving down. So, when the piston starts moving down, pressure is exerted on the fluid and the fluid pressure increases and on the output side, the same pressure is applied on the piston and the piston output piston starts increasing in such a way that synchronizically it is increasing. So, this piston is coming down and the output piston is moving up. So, this gradual synchronization of the piston takes place. So, the displacement is proportional. So, how much uh, the piston input piston is displaced that much is reflected on the output piston side. So, in short what I mean to say is the rise and the fall are same. So, how much the piston A falls that much piston B rises. So, this is constant, this is due to constant application of pressure. right? So, that is the significance of Pascal's law. The Pascal's law will make sure that by properly identifying the attributes like length of the piston that is what we call it as stroke, the diameter of the piston, we will be able to what con constantly supply fluid from the source to the receiver. So, this cylinder is the source and that cylinder is the receiver. Receiver may be any application. right? So, without any loss in the pressure, we were able to transmit power from source to the 
cylinder. So, this is the first application of Pascal's law. So, mathematically we know that uh, force pressure is equal to force by area. So, the with usual nomenclature we find that pressure is equal to force by area. So, which is equal to 1 Newton per meter square which is equal to 1 Pascal. Now, with respect to this uh, what we have we have certain calculations. What is that calculation? We need to find out what is the pressure acting on the input cylinder. So, as I see in the previous case, we have designated uh, the cylinder as uh, 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 the input cylinder and the output cylinder. So, we have on the input side pressure is equal to F 1 by A 1, where F 1 is the force acting on the input side and A 1 is the cross section area of the piston on the input side. So, F is equal, uh, P is equal to F 1 by A 1. Next, what is the pressure acting on the output side? So, on the output side we have the associated pressure as F 2 by P A 2 uh, uh, F 2 by A 2, where F 2 is the force acting on the piston on the delivery side and A 2 is the cross section area of the piston. right? So, P 1 and P 2. So, in short P 1 is equal to F 1 by A 1, P 2 is equal to F 2 by A 2. According to Pascal's law P 1 is equal to P 2. If P 1 is equal to P 2 then automatically what will happen F 1 by A 1 is equal to F 2 by A 2. So, P 1 is equal to P 2 means F 1 by A 1 is equal to F 2 by F 2. Now, you homogenize put all the force component on one side and all the area component on the other side. So, that is F 2 by F 1 is equal to A 2 by A 1. Now, you can see that due to Pascal's law we were able to balance the force by keeping the area constants or conversely you can if you know area both the areas A 2 and A 1 and if you know what is F 1 you can find out F 2 or the other possibilities knowing the areas knowing F 2 you can find out F 1 or you can find out the third possibility is the area. right? So, what I mean to say is you can balance the two cylinders by finding out the variables, any unknown variables. There are four variables involved, two force component and two area component. So, either you can find out the area or you can find out the force applied, which one is required. Now, the next important application of Pascal's law after constant force transmission is force multiplication. In today's world force multiplication is very important because we need to do work effortlessly. right? So, if we do need to do work effortlessly then what we need to do is we need to design systems where we can we can magnify or amplify the power. So, as I explained in the previous lecture that one such example is a uh, servo motor or a servo mechanism. right? or a, st a steering mechanism. In a steering mechanism which is uh, uh, which is power called as power popularly known as power steering a small torque by the driver which will effortlessly turn the vehicle to the left side or the right side. right? So, with that uh, power steering came into picture lot of lot of lady drivers started to use automobiles. right? So, this is the best advantage of the application of Pascal's law that is amplification of the force. So, we need to amplify the force. How do we amplify the force? So, we have one more situation. If you compare this with my previous case, this time I have used two dissimilar cylinders. Please understand the logic. 
if I want to transmit power with constant power transmission as my motive, I need to use two cylinders which are identical. Scenario 2, if I want to transmit power with amplification as my motive, then I need to what transmit uh, cylinders with two dissimilar cylinders. So, previous case similar cylinders, now two dissimilar cylinders. What I mean to by mean to say by two dissimilar cylinder is that the configuration is different. This is a thin cylinder, this is the thick cylinder. So, what I mean to say is the thick cylinder, the thick cylinder, the area is lesser than the thick cylinder. So, A1 is the area, A2 is the area for the thick cylinder. So, A1 is less than A2. F1 and F2 are the corresponding forces acting, right? So, if you examine this, what is the pressure acting on the thin cylinder? P1 is equal to F1 by A1. What is the pressure acting on the thick cylinder? P2 is equal to F2 and E2, right? So, the same principle I will do, I will apply the pressure. So, once I apply the pressure, what will happen is, pressure is transmitted, right? So, what I need to do is, this thin cylinder, I will make it as the input cylinder and this thick cylinder, I make it as the output cylinder as I did in the previous case, right? And now, I will apply Pascal's law. What does Pascal's law state? Pascal's law state that at equilibrium, P1 is equal to P2. The pressure developed in the smaller cylinder will be equal to the pressure developed in the bigger cylinder or the thicker cylinder. So, what will happen? The pressure is same, the pressure intensity is same. Now, because of this P1 is equal to P2. So, what will happen if P1 is equal to P2? F1 by A1 is equal to F2 by A2, right? Now, what happens? You get F1 by F2 is equal to A1 by A2. So, what we are trying to tell you is this uh, cylinders, this thick cylinder is energized in such a way that this thin cylinder is able to lift this piston of this thick cylinder, right? So, that is obviously this is a smaller piston and this is a bigger piston, but this smaller piston is capable of lifting this bigger piston at the same pressure, at this applying the same pressure. So, this is a wonderful application of Pascal's law and this can be used in so many equipments like screw jack, lifts, hydraulic lifts, etc., where a small pressure is used and used to lift a vehicle which is having or a, or a cargo or a, any weight or a dead weight which is much, much greater than the applied load. So, this is the applied load and this is the weight. Next. Now, next let us move on to uh, the sample calculation of displacement and transmission, right? So, let us take one more example, same power amplification. So, we have two cylinders, one small cylinder and another one is big cylinder. The A 1 is the area associated with the smaller cylinder piston, A 2 is the cross sectional area of the larger bigger cylinder cross section and S1 and S2 are the strokes. So, what is a stroke? Stroke is nothing but the distance travelled from one position to the next position, right? So, the stroke is initial position to the final position or any intermediary position. So, this is the stroke S1 associated with first piston, S2 is the stroke associated with the second piston. 
right now we need to find out the relationship between force area and stroke right so by continuity equation we say that q is equal to v1 is equal to v2 so the continuity equation is very important we say that v1 is equal to v2 so velocity at the uh, input side is equal to the velocity at the output side so velocity of the smaller cylinder is equal to the velocity of the bigger cylinder now how do you calculate velocity velocity is calculated as v is equal to area multiplied by stroke right so v is equal to a into s velocity is equal to area into stroke now if you calculate velocity for the thin cylinder it becomes v1 is equal to a1 into s1 if you calculate the velocity for the bigger cylinder v2 is equal to a2 into s2 right so v1 is equal to a1 into s1 v2 is equal to a2 into s2 right as you very well know that v is the velocity and uh, a is the displacement now let us illustrate the same example of pascal's law taking into consideration the control volume right so earlier in my previous uh, uh, force amplification uh, scenario i used only two variables that is force area right now i will add one more dimension to that that is the stroke right so if you look into that into this uh, image you will find out that some variables are there like a1 a1 is the area of the piston on the input side a2 is the area of the piston on the output side v1 is the volume of the piston for the corresponding stroke s1 and v2 is the volume covered for the corresponding stroke s2 of the piston right so what i mean to say is a1 and a2 are the associated diameters of the piston s1 and s2 are the associated stroke length of the piston and v1 and v2 are the volume associated with the respective small and the big pistons right so we have three variables now we know that according to continuity equation v1 is equal to v2 so volume in the thick cylinder is equal to volume at the thicker cylinder so volume that, that is volume in the small cylinder is equal to the volume in the big cylinder now how do you calculate the volume we very well know that volume is equal to area into stroke the general formula volume is equal to area into stroke so if you apply that to the small cylinder v1 is equal to a1 into s1 if you apply that to a big cylinder v2 is equal to a2 into s2 right so according to the pascal's law at equilibrium the volume becomes equal that is v1 is equal to v2 so if v1 is equal to v2 then a1 into s1 is equal to a2 into s2 right so you arrange the terms properly you will get the final word that is s1 by s2 is equal to a2 by a1 right so now what is happening we have we are able to link three important parameters that is force next area next stroke so if we combine all these three components f1 by f2 is equal to s1 by s2 is equal to a2 by a1 right so we can relate the components in such a way that the force component will be equal to area component and the area component will be equal to the stroke component right of course the volume is constant and pressure is constant now one more applications of pressure transmission now this time i have taken an horizontal cylinder so horizontal cylinder having a tandem pistons this is a tandem piston arrangement so what is meant by tandem piston is that the 
uh, this is a multiple cylinder with having different dimensions and piston on one side is connected to the piston on the other side by means of a link. A link may be a pilot or a common link which will connect the larger piston with the smaller piston. Now, what is happening is if you put pressure on the larger piston on what uh, on the larger piston side, the smaller piston side will move on the either side because the pressure is transmitted to the uh, smaller piston via link. The reverse if you apply pressure on the smaller piston, it is transmitted to the larger piston via link. right? So, using the pressure you can transmit either of the pistons. So, you can measure the piston and of course, as usual A 1 is the uh, diameter of the larger piston area, area of the larger piston and uh, A 2 is the area of the smaller piston. F 1 is the force acting on the larger piston and F 2 is the force acting on the smaller piston. Now, according to the Pascal's law at, equilibri at, at equilibri equilibrium, F 1 is equal to F 2. So, if F 1 is equal to F 2, if you want to express force in terms of pressure, you know that P 1 into A 1 is equal to P 2 into A 2. Now, F 1 is equal to F 2, P 2 is equal to A 2. Now, you homogenize P 1 by P 2 is equal to A 2 by A 1. Right? So, P 1 by P 2 is equal to A 2 by A 1. Now, we have built in one more variable pressure. Now, what was our journey? We started with force, then we had a relationship with, with uh, area, next was with the uh, stroke, next was with the pressure. So, all four variables. What is that? Force, area, stroke, pressure. So, how relationship is one variable is interdependent on another. Now, after understanding, deeply understanding the two important applications of Pascal's law that is force, constant force transmission, number two, amplification of force which results in amplification of power. Now, let us know about few devices or machines which are extensively using these, applic these applications. One is hydraulic lift, hydraulic jacks, hydraulic brakes, hydraulic pumps. So, they are extensively used today in industries uh, for the different purpose. This is a uh, hydraulic machine, this is a weigh bridge. So, we know weigh bridge. So, weigh bridge is used to measure the weight of the vehicle. right? So, if the vehicle stands on the weigh bridge, what happens? How, how much is the weight of the vehicle can be calculated? So, that is also based on uh, the Pascal's law. right? So, there is a stand. On the stand, the vehicle is made to park. The force is applied on the cylinder. The master cylinder is there. This time, this is the bigger cylinder and that is uh, received on the smaller cylinder and there is a pressure gauge which will give you the pressure and the pressure is calibrated in terms of area and in terms of force. Finally, the force in terms of Newton is got and the Newton can be converted into kg, kg can be converted into tons. So, like this, this uh, balance of the force with known weight and unknown weight can be made, comparison can be made and the force can be estimated. Right? So, there is a numerous applications of uh, what the Pascal's law and uh, if it is in the case of hydraulic machines, it is lift. So, basically lift is what? We are lifting heavy duty vehicles. If you want to repair a vehicle, so you keep the hydraulic lift under the chassis and just press the button, automatically the chassis is lifted. In case of hydraulic jacks, hydraulic jacks are still a way ahead of hydraulic lift. They completely lift the vehicle to a suitable height 6 feet, 10 feet tall and you can completely perform the underneath the chassis operations. Hydraulic brakes, hydraulic brakes are available for fast moving machines 
uh, vehicles, two wheelers, four wheelers, hydraulic brakes, uh, brakes are preferred today because they are able to arrest any type of rotary motions. Hydraulic pumps are available which are used to display fluid from pressurized fluids to different points. Now, looking at the end, we do know the summary of uh, this Pascal's law. Uh, the Pascal's law uh, summary is, uh, before going to that, we, we came to know about fluid power systems. What are the different types of fluid power system? That is the hydraulic system and second one is pneumatic system. Components of fluid power system. Advantages of fluid power system, applications of fluid power system, we have studied all these things. Transmission of power in static and dynamic states using Pascal's law, Pascal's law and its application, and after this. The learning outcome at the end of this lecture is that the student will be able to explain the meaning of fluid power system. You will be able to list the advantages, disadvantages and application of fluid power system. You will be able to illustrate Pascal's law and how it is applied in normal life. And finally, he is able to describe the basic components of fluid power system in, in, in an application like so many applications like material handling system or any other system. So, with this I will demonstrate a video where we will be able to watch the application of Pascal's law uh, effectively in transmitting the power at a constant rate as well as at the variable rate. So, you can watch this video and uh, you can visualize how Pascal's law is silently governing all the applications. I take this opportunity to acknowledge certain resources, especially web resources. So, as an add-on to this lecture to enhance learning experience, I have taken lot of videos from YouTube channel, so I acknowledge the same. Pascal's law and hydraulic brake system. Pascal's law. Pascal's law was formulated by Blaise Pascal to describe the effects of pressure within a liquid. The law states that the pressure exerted anywhere in a mass of confined liquid is transmitted undiminished in all directions throughout the liquid. The working of hydraulic devices like the hydraulic press and the hydraulic brakes are based on this principle. Hydraulic brake system. We all know that a car slows down and stops when we apply brakes. But how does this happen? How does the force exerted on the foot pedal stop or slow down a car? How does it multiply the force so that it is enough to stop something as big as a car? The basic idea behind any hydraulic system is very simple. The force applied at one point is transmitted to another point using an incompressible fluid, generally oil. Most brake systems also multiply the force in the process. Here you can see the simplest possible hydraulic system. Two pistons are fitted into two glass cylinders filled with oil and connected to one another with an oil-filled pipe. If you apply a downward force on one of the pistons, then the force is transmitted to the second piston through the oil in the pipe. Since oil is incompressible, the efficiency is very good. Thus, most of the applied force appears at the second piston. The advantage of hydraulic systems is that the pipe connecting the two cylinders can be of any length and shape, allowing it to choose any part separating the two pistons. 
The other advantage about a hydraulic system is that it multiplies the force applied. Here you can see the hydraulic brake system of an automobile. It consists of a pipeline containing fluid, one end of which is connected to the master cylinder fitted with a piston attached to the foot pedal. The other end of the pipeline is connected to the wheel cylinder having two pistons P1 and P2 attached to the brake shoes. The area of cross-section of the wheel cylinder is greater than the area of the cross-section of the master cylinder. Let us see what happens when brakes are applied. When the brakes are applied, the foot pedal is pushed due to which pressure is exerted on the fluid in the master cylinder. This pressure is transmitted equally and undiminished throughout the fluid and to the pistons of the wheel cylinder. Therefore, the pistons get pushed outwards and the brake shoes get pressed against the rim of the wheel due to which the motion retards. On releasing the pressure on the pedal, the return spring forces the pistons of the wheel cylinder back and the fluid flows back into the master cylinder. Hope you will remember this the next time you see a driver applying brakes. Hydraulic systems use an incompressible fluid, such as oil or water, to transmit forces from one location to another within the fluid. Hydraulics are used in many ways. Here are some examples. Hydraulics are used in the braking system of car, lorry crane, aircraft, and also use hydraulics in the braking systems and landing gear etc. The hydraulic technology, based on the famous theory, coined by well-known physicist, Blaise Pascal. Mathematician, Blaise Pascal was born on June 19, 1623, in Clermont-Ferrand, France. In the 1640s, he invented the Pascalin, an early calculator, and further validated Evangelist Torricelli's theory, concerning the cause of barometrically variations. Pascal's law states that, when pressure exerted anywhere, upon an enclosed liquid, is transmitted undiminished, in all directions to the interior of the container. As per his principle, allows large forces to be generated with relatively little effort. As illustrated, a 5-pound force, exerted against a 1-inch square area creates an internal pressure of 5 pounds per square inch. This pressure, acting against the 10-square-inch area develops 50 pounds of force. The hydraulic technology has revolutionized the field of innovation. Present-day hydraulic solutions are based upon this technique, using compressible fluids, like oil, water, to produce the kind of needed force. Let's understand, the hydraulic brake, which is used in car, lorries, and motorcycles. The braking systems of cars, working on Pascal's law, the hydraulic brake system, liquid, known as brake fluid, is used to transmit pressure from the brake pedal to all the wheels of the vehicle. 
The hydraulic brakes allow equal pressure to be transmitted throughout the liquid. When the brake pedal is pressed, the piston of the control cylinder applies a pressure on the brake fluid. And this pressure is transmitted via a system of pipes to each cylinder at the wheels. The cylinder at the wheels cause a pair of pistons to push a pair of friction pads to press against the surface of the brake discs or brake drums. The frictional forces between these brake components cause the vehicle to slow down and stop. When the brake pedal is released, a spring restores the brake discs to their original positions. At the end of this lesson, we will able to learn the hydraulic drum brake system and hydraulic disc brake system. Also learn the Pascal law and how does hydraulic system work based on Pascal law. After watching this video, we will be wondering how Pascal's law is silently acting behind these mechanisms, right? Whether it is hydraulic fluid or pneumatic system. You can see that the Pascal's law is being implemented practically to transmit the power at a constant rate in some applications, right? As in the case of conveyor, as in the case of uh, uh, the material handling systems like dumper or a grader or a uh, hydraulic earth moving equipment, you can see that how force is multiplied. So, in some application, we need to multiply the force. In some application, we need to maintain the force at a constant rate as I told you in the examples. So, with this, uh, we'll, you will appreciate the uh, Pascal's law and its application exhaustive, exhaustively in fluid power technology. So, I will stop at this point of time, we will continue in the next class.